Can a worm really eat your brain? I am Dr. Betsy Grunch. I am a board certified neurosurgeon, so let me explain. The New York Times reported today that Robert F. Kennedy had a worm in his brain. And there have been several news headlines that state something like this, that the worm actually ate his brain. And I wanna clarify that. In 2010, Robert F. Kennedy was having some mental fogginess as well as some memory loss, which prompted some imaging of his brain that revealed a stark finding. Now his uncle, Ted Kennedy, actually had glioblastoma in 2009 and was treated at Duke University, which at the same time, I was a resident at Duke. Reportedly, he was scheduled to have a procedure done at Duke to figure out what this was, but once the doctors reviewed his imaging, they came to the conclusion that he had brain worms. They did some testing, which did not include surgery, made the diagnosis, he was started on medication, and had did well after that. I wanna explain what he likely had, how he got it, and did it actually eat his brain? What we can likely gather, he suffered from neurosister sarcosis, also known as brain worms. It's a preventable, parasitic infection of the brain caused by the pork tapeworm. This is what an MRI of someone's brain would look like that has neurosister sarcosis. The life cycle from the CDC website, but let me briefly explain exactly how this can happen because this is kind of complicated. First, you have the eggs of the parasite, Tinea solium, that is ingested by a pig. This pig then eats the eggs and the eggs hatch, penetrate through the pig's intestine, and then lay larvae into the muscles of the pig. Here's what happens next. This human right here is gonna eat some floppy bacon. That means he's eating some undercooked pork. Or she, I'm not being gender specific here. Those larvae then hatch in the intestine of the human and the human poops out some worms. Oh wait, it gets better. This person who then ate the undercooked pork didn't wash their hands after they pooped and they prepared a meal for the next person. This could very well be you eating that freshly prepared salad at the restaurant by the floppy bacon eating person that doesn't wash their hands and then made your salad. What likely happened to Robert Kennedy? This person who had no idea what was going on when they ate their salad, then had these larvae hatch, penetrate their intestines, and then go to the brain. Next thing you know, this is their brain. All these little spots are larvae within their brain. Now, these worms are not actually eating this person's brain. They're actually just setting up shop, making a house, pitching a tent, and living the good life all up in this person's brain. This occupying a space in the brain. It's not actually swimming around and eating brain tissue, but it can cause memory loss, seizures, headaches, brain fog, and other neurological symptoms. This is not Gray's Anatomy. We don't go around in the brain and fish them out like on that one episode. The real fans know what I'm talking about. Often you can make this diagnosis without even entering the brain. Then you can treat this with medications. Take the medicine, the worms die. The next thing you know, 14 years later, you're in the news because they found a dead worm in your brain.